Thesis 18 features another sobriety test. And this sobriety test is phenotypic plasticity. You can say that three times correctly and you're sober. Phenotypic plasticity is huge for the significance of the 55 theses. It's stuck in there. It looks kind of harmless. Basically, phenotypic plasticity is one of the keys to trying to, in one sense, wriggle around what evolution is going to do to you. And this is not accidental. It's very profound. So the concept, or more precisely, the machinery of phenotypic plasticity is truly ancient. It is one of the most ubiquitous features of all living things, animals, plants, and microbes, that they try to find ways to evade the iron hammer of natural selection pounding down on them and finding them unfit. And the way they do that is they hold specific capacities in reserve. And the most famous example of that is the lactose operon in E. coli. You know, your E. coli, Escherichia coli, the bacterium that's inside most people's guts, is your friend. Um, mm. It digests lots of the foods that you consume, and in exchange, you digest E. coli, which actually are more nutritious than many of the foods you eat, especially if you eat crap Western foods, crap Western industrial foods. Now, one of the things that people will consume, sometimes very inappropriately, is lactose, which means the sugar that's in mammalian milk, which is fine, and we're very good at digesting all humans before the age of five. But in later ages, it's pretty much only uh, the Europeans and the Central Asians that are particularly good at digesting the lactose. Um, and the same problem confronts the bacteria. So the bacteria in our guts have this little genetic cassette called lactose operon, which basically gets turned on and starts playing the genetic instructions for digesting lactose when the bacterium is exposed to lactose in your gut. So in the same sense, lots and lots of animals and plants have other kinds of phenotypic plasticity. Plasticity here just means change, mm -hmm. and phenotypic here means it's not an evolutionary change. These bacteria don't have to evolve to turn on the lactose operon. They are just responding to your environment. In the same way, uh, you have the famous example of uh, reproduction being turned on or off in, according to the amount of nutrition that you get. Same basic concept of phenotypic plasticity. And ultimately, later on in the 55, you'll see that exploiting phenotypic plasticity will be a key to stopping our aging earlier.